get out of the league. <laughs> but stick with it, and it's, it's great when you know that, and you play music, and you can um, praise the Lord by music. I can listen to fiddle all day. I mean, I wish I'd get some CD, but just fiddle gospel music, and just listen to it and stuff. But as I'm getting older, I listen to more of a classical. I used to pick on my stepfather about that. He used to love the classical music, and I told him it was elevator music. You know, you have that singing behind it, you know, like some old Hank, you know, and uh, some old uh, Patsy Cline, and some of the Jim Reeves, and all that, and now here I am, 50, and all I want to listen to is just music, nobody singing. <laughs> Coming out of my study and everything, all you hear is just gospel music, or just, a, just a instrumental. And uh, so I guess it goes with age, I don't know. But uh, anyway, let's uh, turn your Bibles to... Um, John, chapter 20. We're going to kind of continue off where we left off this morning. And uh, we were in Luke this morning. But uh, the Easter uh, the resurrection and the ladies going to the tomb. And I told them this morning that they were, they were morticians going, but they left being evangelists or being missionaries. And uh, it's so awesome that we, uh, we know we have a risen Savior. And you, you, you take a look at all these other religions in the world and everything, but we are the only one that has a risen Savior. We have a living God. Amen. Muhammad is dead. Yes. Buddha is dead. All those other ones are dead, but our Savior arose again on the third day to give us eternal life. Where religion ends and Christianity begins is at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because we serve a living Savior. And here we're going to talk about that dark day, that dark Saturday, when they were um, you know, in between the Friday and the Sunday. And, and the hearts were broken, as we talked about this morning. They were, they were, the hearts were broken and they were uh, uh, hurting. Uh, and Mary Magdalene especially. And uh, so, you know, when we look at the crucifixion, we look at it as the darkest day in history. The darkest day, and it was the darkest day because even the sun refused to shine. Didn't it? I mean, God took away even the sun. I mean, it was black. And the earth shook. And the rain poured down. And the veil of the temple was ripped in two. And Diane had they mention in her studies that uh, a lot of you don't know that Jesus' uh, outer garments and stuff was woven um, from top to bottom as one piece. And the veil of the temple was woven from top to bottom as one piece. And when that veil of the temple ripped, we don't need access or go to a high priest or a, or a priest or anybody because we have access to Jesus Christ to the Father. You know, and so the veil of the temple was ripped. But take a look at verse 20, verses, or excuse me, chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. Um, it says, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was dark, yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and the other disciples whom Jesus loved, and saith, Unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Notice how John put that. He ran to Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. Who do you think he was talking about? He was talking about himself, wasn't he? He was talking about himself. And uh, and so, but um, even the light of the sun had been hidden from you on that dark dark day. The image of the dark despair that swept in on the followers, and here they are on that Saturday, and, and just, they all hope seemed gone, and depressed, and, 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 and they, Peter betrayed his Lord, denied him three times, uh, Judas betrayed him, and ended up going and hanging himself. Yeah. He betrayed him for how much? And, uh, 
And so it was a dark day, and they had forgotten or doubts of his promise from rising from the dead. And um, when the women were making their way to the tomb, you know, they were talking about, hey, who's going to roll this stone away? I mean, none of us are G.I. Jane, you know. And uh, so they were talking about that. And uh, so they were wondering who's going to uh, move it. When they came to the tomb, guess what? The stone was rolled away. We talked about this morning. Why? Was it to, to let Jesus out? No, it was for we so they can go in. Jesus could have walked through. Yes. You know? And so it was to to um, let people in, let the disciples in to see that he kept his promise. Yes. He kept his promise. And so uh, and, and they were coming with the spices to anoint the body, and Mary Mary Galene runs ahead of the others and arrives at the tomb before dawn. Notice here it says, you know. Um, we ought to come to Jesus for all. That's why I have a big thing with evangelizing children. You know, because they're our next generation. They're the next generation. We held the Branch Baptist Church as the children, right? You know, and, and they need to know Christ. And they need to follow Christ. You know, and we as parents need to raise our children up to follow Christ. You know, one day that God could use them as a missionary, as a preacher. You know, you can be a missionary in the hospital, you can be a doctor, a lawyer, um, anything, you know, and, and still bring Christ and have Christ-centeredness uh, in, your, in your work. Anyways, uh, but we need to come to Jesus early. And the first day of the week, Mary cometh early. Notice what it says here, the, the first day. That's why we celebrate and we worship on Sunday. Because Sunday is considered the first day of the week. And we celebrate it because it's resurrection. It resurrects a Sunday. You know, the, the Jews celebra, uh, had the, the celebrated on um, Saturday, the Sabbath, and we celebrate on Sunday because our Lord and Savior had rose on the first day of the week. So why did Mary arrive early? Why do you think Mary rose early? Why do you think she got there early, right after the Sabbath? Mean, how, how do you think she slept that night? How do you think the mother of Jesus slept that night? Knowing I mean, her son lost her son. I mean, being beaten so bad. I mean, it's terrible when you lose a child, and then you sit there and watch him being tortured, and you can't do anything about it. And so she ran there. Her heart was, her broken heart required immediate attention from Christ. She needed to get to him as soon as she could. She get me on when when we're Christians, we want to meet Jesus every day, you know. We want to come upon me and wake up in the morning and praise him. During the middle of the day, praise him. And she wanted to get to Jesus as soon as possible. And there are no good reasons to delay in coming to Jesus for salvation, is there? Now is the accepted time. The second um <coughs> six two. Now is the sec uh, accepted time. Now is the day of what? Salvation today is the day. And if you, we don't have tomorrow, do we? No. We're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised this afternoon. I always said that, you know, the under or you might tie your shoes in the morning, but the undertaker might tie them at night. We never know what the day holds for us. Only God holds the future, just like in that song, you know, um, because he lives. You know, he holds the future. He holds the future. And we need to be right with, with Christ. We need to be um, um, right with him. It says, the, long as, the longer we wait, the less likely we are to come to him. Because our heart and our hearts. Hebrews 3.13 says, But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hard enough to the deceitfulness of sin. Sin's going to pull you away. Sin's good. The devil's going to keep you from this book. The devil's going to keep you from reading his word. The devil's going to keep you away from um, coming to church. I had um, different phone calls, uh, even last night, saying, Oh, what time is the sunrise service? 7 o'clock. Oh, yeah, I'm meeting so and so is coming. All right. Praise the Lord. That'll be great. I always say, Lord willing. 
guess what? They never showed up. You know, because a lot of times, you know, the, 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 the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm-hmm. You know, and, uh, and getting up in the morning, you should see, I mean, I was sitting there like this, uh, you know, early in the morning and everything, and uh, trying to get that coffee down. And, uh, but, you know, it says in uh, Hebrews 13, 13, 14, or 13, it says, But exhort one another daily, while it's called today, lest any one of you should harden your heart through deceitfulness of sin. And sin will pull us down. Remember the last sermon I did a few weeks ago about the undertow and the friend? It pulls us up. It pulls us down. It keeps us away. Um, every effort should be made to reach people early, early, to get to them. Our family and our friends, our children, our nieces, our nephews, our, our, our grandkids. Get to them early. Matthew 19, 14 says, but Jesus says, Suffer the little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. The children. It's great to have a great children's ministry. You know, raising the young believers, a godly heritage. I did a wedding. Um, Evelyn and uh, um, Patrick got married yesterday. And, and um, in, in, in the message there, I put, you know, the, 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 the scriptures tell us that you know, uh, God wants us to have a, a godly heritage, raise a godly heritage with, with our children and our children's children. You know, to raise them up in the way of the Lord. And when they are old, they will what? Not depart from Him. You know, we need to teach them because we serve a living God. <coughs> we serve a living Savior. And even, even like I said this morning, the seasons even declare His Lord. Even the seasons talk about the resurrection and the new life. In Christ, winter brings death. Cold. When you think of cold, you think of dead. Right? We're talking about revelations, aren't we? Cold and hot. And what does lukewarm do for God? That church nauseated God because they're right in the fence. They're lukewarm. Now, I told people, I said, you know, cold means the unsaved. Hot means you're on fire for God. Lukewarm is, well, I don't know what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm riding it. I want the world and all the pleasures thereof. But hey, I want to get to heaven someday too. Can't do it. We want to, we want to, uh, uh, all of our stuff and our possessions. I never see the U-Haul at a grave, at a, at a right. graveside. Can't take it with you. Naked you come into this world and guess what? Naked you go up. Amen. Amen. And so, um, but we need to reach the children. We should come to Jesus early to give him our burdens. First Peter 5 says, Casting all your cares upon him because he careth for you. He loved Peter. Peter denied him three times. Mark 16 tells us that he said, Tell his disciples and... Peter. Well, Peter's one of the disciples, right? But Peter's the one that needed to hear it the most. Yes. Because he had denied his Lord three times. He felt like a failure. He said, I'm useless. I might as well just go back and fish. He says, I need you, Peter. I need you. And, and so we need to cast our burdens upon him. Rich devotional lives are developed by seeking Jesus early. In the day. Psalms 63.1. O oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Are you thirsty for God? Are you thirsty for him? That you want him to be your all in all? What is more important to you in your life? Is he your number one? Right there. What is the first commandment? Thou shall not have any other gods before me. Years ago, I always thought it was the number seventh commandment that people broke the love. Maybe that's why they, you know, took it out of the, you know, the, the, the courthouses. Because, you know, the lawyers. <laughs> and they were probably uh, hitting them hard. But number one is what, what um, thou shall have no other gods before me. What do you put in front of God? Is it your children? Is it your family? Is it anything you put in front of God? Money can't take it with you. When you go, your bank account isn't going to say, 
um, you know, forward into heaven. There is no stars up there in heaven. I mean, there is no uh, glory mark. <laughs> Anybody runs around their PJs up there. <laughs> but we ought to come to Jesus while it is still dark. If anyone knew what darkness was, Mary Magdalene. She had seven demons. How many are fighting depression today? How many feel like sometimes you don't want to even get up in the morning? The darkness that we, we face daily. Turn on the news, you get all kinds of darkness. There's no good news anymore. Did you ever hear of them putting on the, on the news? Uh, you know, Thomas Road has big revival. So and so many get saved. No, but if there's a fight, hey, look at this church over here. They're, they're at fisticuffs. They want to put out the bad news. You never hear any good news anymore. But Mary Magdalene knew a lot about darkness. She had once been um, dominated by the powers of darkness. A lot of times the, the, the powers of darkness try to control our lives. Run us by drugs and uh, alcohol and um, other things, sex, you know, a big one in today's society with teens. And these powers of darkness, they, they, they try to run us. And, you know, but Christ broke the powers of sin against us. He broke the bondage that sin holds over us. You know, we're still sinners. We're not driven by our sin anymore. You know, and we're, we're, we're driven by the Holy Spirit. We're going to mess up. Peter messed up, right? All the disciples messed up. We all mess up. But God is right there and He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. We confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. You know, but we're going to mess up. But Mary knew what darkness was. Mark 69 says, Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Seven. Seven. And he delivered her from her, their power. Mary had learned that Jesus is the light of the world. You know, while she was in darkness, she realized that she, he was the only light. He was the light of the world. And we are in, 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 in darkness. We have darkness surrounds us. With murder here and murder and mayhem. Even in our next door neighbors, you know, are getting killed off nowadays. And um, in, in John 8, 12, says, He spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Light of life. You know, this is what Easter is all about, is the risen Christ. He sits at the, the right hand of the Father. You know, and He intercedes for us. He died for us. He paid that penalty. He rose again on that third day to give us eternal life. One day we're going to be with Him. And I can't wait. You know, we come into heaven and He says, Well done, good and faithful servant. You know, we're, we are going to be judged by the works we do on this earth as Christians. God knows everything. He knows our thoughts. He knows our heart. He knows why we don't come to church on Sundays. We can come with all kinds of excuses. You can be a pastor, you hear all kinds of excuses. Well, you know, this, that, you know, you know. Oh, okay, I'm so sorry for that. But God knows. God knows your heart. You know? You can't fool God. And, and we're going to be judged on our works here on this earth, what we've done when we're saved. Now those who aren't saved, those who don't know Christ, will be at the white throne judgment and all their sins will be open before them. Open for every thought, every action, everything that we did. You say, man, I thought he was about that. All written down. You'll be judged. And if you just take the Ten Commandments and God judge you today, you'll be found 
Innocent or guilty? I'll be found guilty, but thank God for Christ. He came and paid the penalty for my sin. And through his blood, I am, I am free. God sees me, the Father sees me through the Son. And one day I'm going to be up there with him. And my, my slate is wiped clean because of Jesus. How about yours? And the next point I want to, to bring in, we're closing out here. We ought to come to Jesus in spite of our obstacles. There was a big obstacle in front of them, wasn't there? The guards, the seal, the tomb, right? This is what they were thinking of. Well, how are we going to anoint the body? Who's going to roll this big old thing out of our way? What are we going to do? These are obstacles. A lot of times, obstacles keeps us from coming to Christ. The biggest one is pride. The biggest one is pride. Don't want to do it. Maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow might be too late. There was always obstacles coming in getting Jesus. Pride. Fear is another one. Fear. Selfishness. How about the big one here? Favorite sin. I just can't stop doing what I'm doing because... I enjoy it too much. <laughs> that stops you from coming to Jesus. But see, you need to surrender all. It's not just believing that Jesus is who he says he is. Okay. Satan believes in Jesus. He knows who Jesus is. Mm-hmm. And he trembles. But he us to surrender. That's what we need to do is surrender ourselves to Christ. Have Him live through us. Have Him guide us. Direct us. Help us. Because I'm just a stupid man. And my wife says, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> But I'm just a stupid man. I make stupid mistakes. But God is faithful and just to forgive us. And He wants us to be close to Him. So, what obstacles are keeping you from coming to Him today? What obstacles are stopping you from coming to Christ? Is it your pride? Is it your fear? Um, is it your selfishness? Or is it your favorite sin? You just can't let go. You just love it too much. You know, I mean, I was talking with uh, Evelyn this week, and I got a good proposition for all of you. I want to see how many hands will show up if I ask you to do this for one week. Okay? One week. Okay? Do not get on Facebook. Do not, or how about do not use your cell phone except for emergency calls or important calls, but do not use your cell phone for reading or texting or Facebooking, playing games. Solitaire, all those. For one week, could you do it? How many hands could do it? Brother John. Can't do it, huh? Can't do it. You can raise your hand, but you don't do it. Because you know what takes place when we are on our phone and stuff? We ignore our family. We ignore our children. Especially we ignore God. Boy, we're on there. 
We're on our phones more we're in the Bible. Now, you say, well, I'm reading the Bible on the phone. <laughs> I've never heard of some of the Bibles that you guys have. <laughs> it's a challenge if you do it. Or how about just for one day? You know, we'd have a big problem if all the cell, cell, uh, cell towers went out. We'd be chaos and angry people. Murder and mayhem. Why the strangling husband could, couldn't use Facebook. <laughs> but <laughs> the point is, is that even I get in that too. Diana always tells me I'm just a techno geek. And I pass it on to my son, Dakota. But um, it is hard. I, I was telling somebody, you know why we really look at Facebook a lot? Because of our simple nature. We're, we're nosy. We want to know what's going on with other people. And they put it out there. And so we read it. And then we go around and tell somebody else, hey, did you see what I saw on Facebook? Hey, hey. But the whole point is, these are obstacles that are in our path to get to Jesus. You know, and you need to surrender all and come to Christ. Those who come to Christ, or those who come to Jesus, find the obstacles rolled away. Find the obstacles rolled away. Christ is our all in all. There is no, I'm going to tell you this right now for the young folk out there. Tell me right now, there is no Facebook in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> the mansions aren't Wi Fi equipped. I'm going to put it out there. But the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, tomb by an angel. Mary found the grave empty. Christ was alive. But notice what she did. Let's finish up verse 2. Then she running to come to Simon Peter and the other disciples whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we not know where they have laid him. Even then, they had that unbelief that he kept his promises until they came and saw for themselves and Jesus came and showed them. Even Thomas said, I will not believe unless I do what? Put my finger in his hands and a finger in his side and I'll believe. And what did Jesus say? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Amen. And that is us. We weren't there. But Christ prayed for us in God of the Son. He died for us and His love. He knew when you were going to be born. He knew. He formed you in your mother's womb. He created you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made by Jesus Himself. He came and died for you because sin, you know, Satan had, and Adam and Eve first sin and disobeyed God and fell in all of us. The only one that could save us was the one without sin. The one without the disease. And he came all the way to heaven, put on our flesh, and died for us. Are you ready today to repent of your sin? Are you ready to say, you know, I'm going to throw away my pride, I'm going to throw away my fear, I'm going to throw away my selfishness, I'm going to give up the sin I love this, the swallowing. Some of us are like pigs in the, in the swallowing, in the mud, in the muck, in the mire. We love the wallowing. It. it makes us feel good. But guess what? It's going to take your right to Come to Christ today. As we sing our last hymn, 305. <coughs> Because those who find Christ alive, we need to spread, we know that he's alive, we need to do what? Spread the good news.
Come on up to the altar. Give up your pride. Give up the obstacles that are keeping you from the Savior. Surrender all to Him today. Repent of your sin. Turn away from it. Come to Christ today. Give Him your heart. Give Him your, your soul.